Hi, my name is Rick Nichols. I'm here today to explain to you how you can fill in your shop safely the water plant CO2 bottles available from Gulfstream. Alright, so here on the table we're showing you the water plant cylinders. This is the two and a half pound size. This is the one and a half pound size. This is 1.25 pounds and this is the 12 ounce or three quarter pound size. We have a pair of safety glasses here. Safety glasses are important whenever you're working with compressed gases. We have the seals. The seals are used to make a seal between your fill whip and the bottle you're filling and the bottle that you're supplying from. Uh, this is the fill whip. It is a professional grade fill whip. It's a high pressure hose capable of handling 5,000 PSI. It's got a CGA fitting on each end. That's a CGA 320, which is the universal fitting for CO2. Uh, this wrench is here to supply extra torque if you should happen to need it to tighten one of these nuts onto a cylinder. So the next part of this procedure is to get to filling. One of the things that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to determine the empty weight of every cylinder that you fill and you're going to have to determine the quantity of CO2 that it holds. Uh, what we do in this case is we take our scale and we weigh the empty CO2 cylinder which is 2.12 pounds. We actually write it on the bottom of the cylinder, so that information is permanently there. 2.12 pounds. Once you've established the weight of the cylinder, you know what's going to weigh full. This cylinder holds 1.5 pounds, so 1.5 plus 2.12 is 3.62 pounds should be the empty weight. If it's overfilled, you need to drain a little bit out, and we'll show you how to do that a little later. This is the fill whip. It's got the CGA 320 valve on, uh, on each end. This is a CGA 320 outlet on all these cylinders. If you can see over here, a CGA 320 outlet is the universal outlet used in the United States for connecting CO2. The supply cylinder is a 50 pound CO2 with a siphon tube. You can get one of these from your local welding supply store or you can purchase one on your own. But if you look at it, you'll notice that the valve on both of these cylinders, even though they appear different, have the exact same outlet to them. The next part of the procedure is going to go involve attaching your fill whip. I'm going to attach the fill whip to our supply cylinder here. I've already got one of these seals in the whip to make a seal between the whip and the supply cylinder. The wrench that we talked about earlier is in case you need a little bit of extra torque on that valve, you can put the wrench on there and just give it a little tightening. This is a ball valve. This is going to turn your supply on and off. This is the on position, this is the off position. Once you've established this connection between your supply cylinder and your fill whip, you can open the valve and you'll see that nothing comes out the other end. This little block that you see right here is a bleeder valve. This is made to depressurize this line after you've filled a cylinder. We connected our fill whip to the uh, supply cylinder. This is our 50 pound supply cylinder. Uh, it's got a siphon tube in it. You can get a cylinder like this full delivered from your local welding supply store. You can purchase your own and take it to some place and get it filled. Uh, this is our supply cylinder. These cylinders over here are the ones that we are filling. Uh, as we talked about before, what we like to do is we like to put the cylinder on the scale. Note the empty weight of the cylinder on the bottom, so you always have that information available. This cylinder weighs 2.12 pounds empty. It is a 1.5 pound cylinder, uh, so when we fill it, it's going to be 3.62 pounds. The weight of pre-chill this cylinder is either to put it in the refrigerator or you can connect it to your fill whip as I'll do right now. Open the valve. Make sure your bleeder screw is turned off. Open your supply. You can feel the CO2 or hear the CO2 rush into the cylinder. We're going to shut that off. We're going to turn our valve off here. And using the bleed screw, we're going to bleed the line. 
Once the line has been depressurized, you can unhook your cylinder from the fill whip. And then you can chill it by sitting it, holding it firmly on a flat surface. Once the cylinder is sufficiently filled, you close the valve, reattach your fill whip, open the valve, and then open your supply line. you'll actually be able to see this cylinder thaw as it fills. Once the CO2 has stopped transferring, you're going to turn off your supply line, close the valve on your cylinder, bleed the pressure out of your line, Remove the cylinder from the whip and check the weight. We got that very well chilled this time. We actually have a full weight of 3.70 pounds, which is more than an ounce overweight. If that happens, you take the cylinder and turn it upside down, hold it firmly, crack the valve, lead a little bit out. So basically what we have here is a cylinder that's already been pre-chilled. There's no need to put CO2 in it and, and empty it out. So what we'll do is we'll take this one. This one happens to be the one and a half pound model. You can see where we've written on the bottom the empty weight is 1.88 pounds. I'm going to go ahead and attach our fill whip to it. Open the valve. Make sure our bleeder screw is closed, and I'm going to go ahead and crack our supply. You can see that cylinder thaw quickly as it's filling. Alright, well I can no longer hear the CO2 transferring from one cylinder to another, so I'm going to shut off our supply. I'm going to close the valve on the cylinder. I'm going to open the bleed screw. Depressurize our line. Take the bottle off of here. As I said, it's 1.88 pounds empty. It holds 1.25 pounds. So that would be 2.3.13 pounds full.